everybody. I think we'll, we'll get started in it. Just, well, we'll get, we'll get started, shall we? That's what we're here for. Um, I'll start, yeah. Uh, thanks for coming tonight. Uh, my name is Noel Chudwick, and I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Shalom of Infinity. I'm looking after this event this evening. Um, just so you know, those who don't know, Shalom of Infinity is a science fiction magazine, and we also publish books and run live events. Of course, we've gone digital now, like everybody else on the planet. Uh, we've been going for about five years, and we're based in Edinburgh, in Scotland. So, uh, this is a small gathering tonight, so we're going for a relaxed Sunday evening vibe. So I hope you've got a nice, comfortable couch to sit on, and a, and a mug of tea or coffee. Or, or uh, your choice of space cocktail. Um, yeah, space cocktails, yeah, fair enough. Dry martini. <laughs> Drink of choice. <laughs> right. So, so let me get started then. Um, what we're going to talk about tonight, we're looking at the, the um, uh, artwork in science fiction. And what we've got in front of you here uh, are two people who, in the beginning of, of Shoreline of Infinity, Mark is my co founder of Shoreline of Infinity. And one thing we wanted to start up, when we started up the idea of Shoreline of Infinity as a magazine, was to make sure it was as visually attractive as the stories were good. So Mark, with his art background, became art director instantly and took over the role of making sure the artwork and illustrations were top-notch. And I think he's done a fantastic job since issue one of doing that very same job. So you know, Mark Turner is the art director and co-founder of the magazine. And his little biography, his little 50 word is... He's been drawing comics since the age of six. I wonder if he's still got that. Uh, nowadays, he writes and draws The Tale of the Beachcombers and the webcomic Magpie of Space, uh, as well as short, crazy videos on Blender software. Now, Stephen Pickering uh, is a creator by nature. Um, illustration only makes up a small part of his portfolio. He does other things apart from drawing, but for me, as far as I know, he's, he's a brilliant artist and illustrator. He actually gave up art over 20 years ago, he says, before being dragged back to it. He has at times been both a street artist and publisher of greeting cards. So if you want a greeting card, he's your man. But at the moment, he's spending a lot of time on his imaginary planet of Nar 6. So I'm going to hand you over to, to Mark Toner, and he's going to take over the evening with his mate Stephen, who is on R6. Mark, over to you. Thank you, Doug. Now, should we be able to switch you to speak of you? Is that the best we can do this? It's advised. I will actually help promote that. But yep. uh, I'll, I'll do that. If you've got to get best results in this, you want to watch via speak of you, which is on a little link in the top right hand corner. And you get everyone in full screen. That's the best way to look at things. That's good. It's getting busy now. Uh, I see lots of people. Great. Okay, okay Mark, over to you. What's it called again? Which, what's, what's the... Uh... Oh, uh, <laughs> up the top right, uh, you want to do speaker view, not, not gallery view. Right. No. He, he doesn't use Earth technology a lot, so we have to keep him right. Mine, mine's Valve. You must have the NAR version of the software. Can't do that. It's all right. There's not that many of you. If there's 500, I'd have a problem. But uh, yeah, you'll keep with it. Yeah, yeah. I'll live with it. Okay, that's okay. great. Well, I'll shut up then. Bye. Okay, thank you very much, though. That's great. Um, so uh, yes, yeah, so I, as you know, Steve lives on a, a planet called NAR Six. Uh, so this has been a bit tricky to arrange this one, which is why I've got the Shaw Infinity spaceship to take myself there. So I'm now in orbit over that planet uh, to facilitate an easier conversation with Steve. And you're all receiving this by a, a subspace uh, punch through with a, a particularly advanced Klystron oscillator. And the, as we drop movie uh, quotes of that as we go along, you can try typing them into the side if you can guess what they are. So, uh, so hello Steve, how are you doing? How's, how are things down in R6? Oh, brilliant. Uh, the, it hasn't rained here for three years. So uh, it's definitely different than the rest of the planet, uh, all the planets. Um, but yeah, yeah, we're fine. Yeah, just um, it's uh, pretty dry. Yeah. Why you need your sun hat? Pardon? Why you need your sun hat? Yeah, yeah that's right. This this really important. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, uh, where, where, you notice you're in front of an interesting piece of uh, landscape there. Uh, so whereabouts are you on the planet, Steve? Uh, well, uh, we live just on the edge of the dry zone on, uh, on planet now 6, and from the veranda at the back of the house, we look out to the acid caves of now 6, which you can see behind me. Um, quite uh, spectacular. Built by the old people. Uh -huh. A long lost generation. We have no idea why it's called the Acid Caves of Nar 6. Not the foggiest idea. Awesome. Interesting place. Right, oh, well, so we better uh, introduce what we're, we're about here then. Because um, uh, we kind of got into this very early on. Um, with the, as I said, you know, I found with the magazine. And the, I went to chat to a few artists to begin with, but you were one of the early ones. And um, we, we kind of got you involved in uh, what eventually became Unit 16, which is the art division of the, the co-op. And that's another thing, uh, if people want to try and uh, tell us where Unit 16 comes from, we will reveal all at the end. So as a request for you, you can start putting that into the chat box if you can find that on the right there. Maybe it's got an answer to, where do we get the title Unit 16? Um, it, it, it didn't exist in the beginning, did it? Didn't know. It was a loose sort of conglomeration of artists, and you were kind of heading it. Yeah. And as as it developed, and and you got we got into a sort of chat thing on online. We had to divide it into groups, and that was the name that we came up with. Yep. So we, we came up with names for everything, and most things had a name from some section of the magazine that we were working from. But because we were everywhere, we needed to come up with our own names. So that, that's how we came up with units. So ending those where that comes from, you can take that on the side and uh, you'll get um, a no prize at the end if you get it right. You know. So, um, yeah, so I'll, I'll, get, I'll start off. Steve, how did you get started in illustration, Steve? Oh, I just, I've always drawn. I've always kind of scribbled stuff, uh, like yourself. I mean, you know, the, uh, allegedly they stuck a pencil in my hand when I was very small and I, most kids just kind of scribble. But I was drawing little square boxes with wheels underneath them. Um, I don't know what that was all about, but yeah, uh, but yeah, I, I just, it, it, it's always been a sort of escape route for me. I just relax by drawing, just mainly for myself. <clears throat> it's only later on that I started to make a few quid out of it. A few credits, sorry, a few credits, a few now credits. Right, yep. Um, yeah, I, think, I think that's the way a lot of think people get into the kind of illustration of comics. I remember talking to Cam Kennedy, uh, quite a famous comic artist. He described being a little boy uh, at your home and he's, he's the, the family from Glasgow and uh, you know, everybody else would be doing things like you know, chatting around the table or watching TV and stuff. And he'd be sitting drawing and I thought, guess that was, exactly, that was me at the same age. I was drawing all the time. So uh, I suppose you get thousands and thousands of hours of practice that way and it becomes kind of second nature that you draw stuff as a way of responding to what's going, going on around you. But uh, why, why illustration rather than just drawing your own stuff? Uh, yeah. Fine, no, I, it never really appealed to me. I, 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 I you know, I, I always looked at comic strips and other illustrations, and you know, certain illustrations really impressed me. And I, I kind of looked at the technique uh, closer. You know, I, people like Arthur Rackham, you know, um, and I'm a huge fan of uh, Mobius, and I kind of studied individual uh, lines and use of a pen to see how they were achieving what they did uh, and, and it was it just kind of broke it down and I was an awful plagiarist is that the right word? I just copied their styles and yep. kind of and it, it's influenced my own style I think I yep. can't get out of it now I just can't escape from it Yeah, you develop these things early on don't you? I, I can remember when I was a kid it was the 60s and uh, at that point the Marvel Comics people had started printing, reprinting the stories in the UK in kind of black and white reprints and the comics at the Fantastic, Terrific, and the Pow, of which I got all of them. And I'm just so impressed with the artwork. I used to sit and copy old frames. They were trying to figure out how, to, how did these guys do that. So I suppose it was the guys like Jack Kirby and stuff like that I was trying to, trying to copy at an early age. And uh, I'm not, I'm not degrading. Uh, uh, the, you know, uh, pulling down um, uh, Marvel comics, but uh, the, 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 the style never kind of... I used to buy them occasionally. Um, it, it never really appealed to me when I was younger. I can see how good it is now, 
But I didn't kind of go down the route of, you know, copying them out. Or I was a big fan of Silver Surfer, though. I was a huge fan of Silver Surfer. I used to have a T-shirt, Silver Surfer T-shirt, yeah. when, when I was 16, yeah. Very different stories than those ones. Yeah. Yeah, I like the kind of in-your-face way that things used to fly out the pages at you and those ones. They're just kind of caught by imagination, so there's a lot of that. Yeah. That was good. So, uh, yeah, so anyway, so we started off with all that. Um, so did, what, what kind of uh, early stuff did you do you know, to kind of confirm your, your art credentials and kind of decide that that's something you wanted to do? Uh, let me think. I, I mean, I did some stuff when I was at school. Um, more not illustration more kind of fine art stuff uh, did a levels uh, and then kind of flunked when it came to going to go to university and doing fine art or anything there i just copped out um but i really still enjoyed doing the art and then i i was just one day i thought well, that's a really pretty house next to the road where i was walking i thought i'd like to sit and draw that see if i could actually do it so i turned up one day with this drawing sketch pad and a camp stool and I just sat outside this house and I just drew it and I was just coming to the end of it and the lady came out of the house and said that's fantastic that's my house I said yeah I know it's, it's a pretty house what you know and she said can I buy it off you I said yeah if you want so um she bought it and I thought I got some money in this yes. <laughs> I love the cat hey p pussy cat yeah. um I uh yeah you know, I just thought yeah I can do this so I I just continued doing uh, drawings of people's houses, you know, and then stuff for architects and estate agents. You know, if there was a, a, a new housing estate being built, they have to try and sell these new houses, and they put a picture of the um, you know, artist's impression of the new house that's not been built, and they needed it for the estate agent window. Well, these days, they just do it digitally, but in the old days, they had to get somebody to actually draw it. Um, so I used to do that, and it just grew from there. <laughs> this is a comment. It's just up to what's the exclamation mark? Well, what I mean, you 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 you, you, you said you, you were influenced by the the Marvel stuff, but what, where did where did it start to kick into the kind of commercial side? You know, when did you suddenly think, uh, oh, I've sold that, somebody's bought it? Yeah, um, I I don't think I, I did not to make a lot of money. <laughs> so it's more that things got published. I don't do I don't do anything unless it makes some money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, basically, it was fame that got me. Uh, so at school, um, the, um, the one of the, the one of the English teachers I got on with very well actually said he was going to resurrect the old school magazine and get people kind of you know, interested in what was going on, and because uh, he had a very daft sense of humour, and uh, he realised that myself and one of my pals we were quite keen comic drawers. So he came up with some scripts based on kind of takeoffs of various uh, uh, current TV shows and stuff, and said, "Can we draw those?" So we said, "Yeah, that's fine." So we drew the comics, and uh, we got through. I think it was the issues of this thing before the, the school finally pulled the plug, saying, "You know, it's not really a school magazine because there's no news in it. It's just on comics." <laughs> so, but, uh, but it was quite popular for the short run that it got, and then I realised that yeah, I could actually structure something into a proper comic. And, and tell a story with the pictures at that point. Um, you, did better than, you did better than I did at the school magazine. All we, all, all we had was an office with a typewriter and a, and a gestetner, but we had a filing cabinet in which we hid the bottle of gin, which yeah. was really good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't need to draw anything. It was just disappeared making excuses to find the bottle of gin. <laughs> now you got to watch these artists, something not you? <laughs> yeah, I can remember um, a hand drawing into wax covered banda uh, stencils. Oh, God, yeah. Things got fringes. So it was very primitive technology back then. <laughs> and, uh, all these kids that draw on tablets and stuff, so I wonder why I have trouble with that. So, well, I'm used to actually hand carving my own printed comics. So, <laughs> so that's, uh, that's the way to go. But, uh, but every, every, every time after that, whatever I ended up doing, I always ended up doing a comic along with it. So, when I was, I was studying, I was a postgrad at Edinburgh. Uh, doing, doing astronomy and uh, but at the same time there was a newsletter for all the UK astronomers out from there and I ended up doing a comic on that um, this thing of Comfrey about a wee postgraduate student and these adventures and various takeoffs of various members of staff of the observatories and that actually lasted I was actually at Edinburgh for three years but the comic actually lasted ten 
because I was still doing it even after I'd left. <laughs> so I was more successful at that than I was as a student. <laughs> so uh, that kept going for a while. And then that kind of eventually, you know, trundled on to, you know, when Ron and I thought about doing a, a magazine, we should have a, have a comic in it. So there's always, always something going on into that. So, yeah. They do say that, that comics are the, the only true art. Uh -huh. in, yeah, in the sense that if people don't buy them, they cease to exist. Yes. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, because they just pulp them all. <laughs> they don't go, that's right. <laughs> so anyway, but, uh, coming on to the, the, your, what we are doing in Shoreline, did you have any favourite stories to illustrate, uh, the, the ones you've... you've, you've well, I mean, a, the, I've got back copies of, of Shoreline here. I, I can honestly say I've not sat down and read the whole lot. Um, but the, the ones that you've asked me to, to, to illustrate, uh, um, I've, you know, I've religiously sat down and read that story from the beginning to the end several times. And then you've given me the free remit to choose where I think the illustration should be for that, that story. And I think that's, that's, that's very trusting, but it's very, you have to be really careful. I mean, you could just draw something which doesn't relate much to any, any of the story, but it's just yep. just a picture. Or you could draw a spoiler. You know, you could actually draw the punchline, which is just, yep. uh, no way you do that. Yep. Uh, but it's really difficult to choose the illustration, which doesn't tell the story, but encourages the reader to start reading. Yeah, that's uh, that, that's, that's the, the, the fundamental of it. Uh, I think. Uh, for artists that, that, that get that, that, that's I tend to say, here's a story and I know you'll do something with it. And that's basically, I know you've got that idea. Other ones I help a lot more who kind of look at it and think, oh, what about yeah. this? Uh, so I, I have to kind of spell out this idea that we need to get a kind of a teaser that'll make people want to read it. So there needs to be something interesting out of the story, not just like the, the bland first scene or something like that. But also, I mean, the, the temptation is, is, is to, to, to try and illustrate the whole story in one picture. And that's yeah, that's painful, isn't it? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the big you can do that. I mean, Jackie's very good at that. She, she does some things where you get a lot of elements of the story in one design. She does some quite clever stuff like that. Yeah. But uh, there's the favourite ones, favourite ones. Um, I don't know, they've all been pretty good. Um, I think the first one... Um, Perhaps i see you later, was that the one? See you later. Yeah, I mean, I was still kind of finding my feet on that, and it's probably not the best illustration of of, uh, of the ones I've done, f the black and white ones I've done for the inside of Shoreline. I'm a, I'm a gallery, folks, it's going to go up on the website, so I've got the access to this thing, uh, which will go up with the recording of this, so you can look at it later. Uh, but we can actually pick out some of the pictures. There you go. That's the one. See you later. See you later. Um, quite quite pre-Raphaelite in its um, in its uh, design and, and construction as the illustration I thought. Um, such a very very difficult one to actually to to do an illustration for because there's a woman looking into a mirror and she can't actually see her own reflection because she's invisible. Now how the hell do you interpret that as an illustration? You know, if you took it to its true um, you know, uh, true direction, she shouldn't actually be there. Nope. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, the drawing of a room with a mirror and a sink is a bit dull. Yeah. Um, so well, it was kind of difficult, but the story is stunning. I still think it's one of the best. Yeah. And of course, that's available as an audio play uh, uh, online as well. So I'll have a look at See You Later. That's a, a good one. Yeah. So we've got quite a few. Yeah. No, no. I, 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 I like that one, and I tell you, one I like is the one with the what's the one with the the the, the, the spaceship kind of breaking free from the planet, and then it's, it's oh yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, what was it? Cool. Yeah, because you were looking for spaceships in recon. There you go. Um, oh, Overkill by Rob Butler. Okay. Yeah, I, I, that was that was really quick to actually construct, mm -hmm. but I, I thought it was quite effective. Yeah, yeah, that's a good. Point that and it just jumps out at you thinking oh something's happening here yeah. Um, yeah. and you don't give away anything because it's actually a real twist to that story but it's not given away by that but that's right yeah yeah i mean again a great story i love the story um 
I mean, that, those were the those were my two favourites from the inside of the. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they didn't get covers for us because we had this scheme back then uh, where uh, we would have an artist do a whole year's covers with, with them all linked, and you got a, a set of those to do. Um, do you want, is there any one here you'd like to pick out to kind of show us what this is about? Um, oh, favourite. Um, of those, uh, well, the one that was nominated for um, the British Science Fiction Awards, uh, nominated mm. Iceland, but I didn't win anything. Which yeah. was uh, the rescue of sister? That's right. That was a, that was a classic. That one. That's a good one. Yeah, this kind of somehow reminded me of Harry Harrison stories. I'm not quite sure why. <laughs> I think there's a scene like this in one in a stainless steel rat or something. I've like seen, but this is not what's happening in, in you. It's something else, isn't it? Um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed uh, kind of putting that one together, and I think the colours and the composition and the angle of like you're looking at it was. Um, I was particularly proud of that one. Yeah. So what what can you tell us about the characters? Because this, well, that... yeah. well, I, I, I there, there was four there was four covers, and I wanted to tie them together with a sort of theme. And I thought, well, the easiest thing the way to go there is to have one character appearing on all four covers. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the previous artist had done that, hadn't she? Yeah. Um, Julia. Um, Julia. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I thought that was a great idea, so I just kind of cribbed it. Yeah. Uh, so we we stuck. I stuck this guy in called Reader, um, and he appears in all of them. And I thought, how's it how's he going to appear in each one, and how can we make it interesting? So I made a note here. I can't remember this bit, so I have to use my crib note. Oh yeah. So I had this idea that the the, the 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 main character should be should have a the power of auto psycho self projection. That sounds grand, doesn't it? That's an ability that allows him to mentally project a physical system visible to others but without the ability to physically interact himself so he's his breath his mind is projecting what's going on around him or part of it anyway there's a lovely picture in one of them where you can see this sort of thing happening <laughs> is it it's, it's the thought discharge discharge i think it gets too much in his head and that's the only way to empty it out yeah. Personally, I, I, I opt for a, a dry martini. It's far less yeah, painful. Yeah. Well, I'll just come out of the art gallery. Yeah, so, and so that gallery will be up uh, on online. In fact, um, you can actually see it. I'll put the link up. Oh, sorry, it's there. Yeah, right there. Um, that's a wee link I've just popped up. You can actually go and look at that on your, your uh, browser afterwards. And they will we'll put that up with the video of the whole conversation. So, people can. so, so you're, you're orbiting now six at the moment, is that right, Mark? I am, yes. Yeah, this is, this is my spaceship I'm in here. Right. So you, you're going to take the descent shuttle and come and visit or not? Or you haven't got the time? Well, it depends on, on whether you're COVID-free down there or not, as to whether I'm allowed to do that. It's not been invented down here, so we're yeah, perfectly right. OK. Yeah. Yeah, but, but uh, I, I, you can come down. I can mix you up a nice dry martini. Well, that sounds good. Yeah, I, at the moment, I'm just kind of... Using my space cocktail. Pina colada. Space pina colada. You're allowed these you know, in, in low gravity without uh, it can do weird things to your head. So, uh, but uh, yeah, when I'm on planet side, I'll get you to make me one. Well, uh, you know, you spent three months in uh, suspended animation, so you kind of dehydrate. So you've yeah. got to keep the liquid levels up. Yeah. That's right. You have to. You have to get going with that. <laughs> so, what, what's your what's your latest thing that you're you, you're drawing at the moment, Steve? What, what, what are you on to? Well, I did the background. This yeah. was this afternoon, yeah, the um, the um, the acid caves. So, Very good. Uh, most recently, well, I did the, a cover which is top secret, so I can't tell you what it is. Yes, oh, oh that's right. Yeah, no, we can't reveal that. That's a really good cover. Yeah, there's another publication that we're doing as a group, and Steve's been helping with that. And there's a fantastic cover he's put together for that one. So watch out; that will be available. Yeah, that's, that's, is that a novella? Is that a right? It's a short novel. Uh, I th yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, I think I think the novellas. Um, the, and all knows us this stuff because he deals with all the words. You know, so he knows what that's about. But it right. is shorter than a novel, uh, but longer than a short story. So right. yeah, we'll do it. Yeah. I should I, I should look forward uh, to appearing on a newsstand. To be appearing on newsstands, or at least in the Show Them Vinty website shortly. So we will have a look at that. Right. I think we can do. It's called Ace Doubles, but uh, that's about all we'll say. Yeah, Ace Doubles. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I've, 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 I must admit, I've kind of copped out of the art field slightly just of late. I've got other, the COVID thing has kind of made it a bit difficult. Uh, you know, I've had to concentrate on the, the more lucrative paying work and the art 
side and the illustration side is great fun. I mean, it's absolutely brilliant fun. But uh, sadly, it doesn't make huge amounts of money. So um, I'll come back to it. Yep. Yeah. Um, the, the bits that I have done, I've really enjoyed. Yeah. Uh, um, so don't, don't, don't kind of think I've left the planet completely. I'm still here. Yeah, they'll keep finding yeah. jobs at you. To keep you yeah, just keep firing the odd job, job at me just to kind of wake me up now and again. That's right, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, so just I think uh, other things, you know, the fun, you know, doing the art, that's great. But we're also Artists with Show and Infinity Group, which is uh, which adds, it has its own perks of, of things we get to do. Uh, one of which was uh, we've a couple of times we've done the uh, comic festival at Money I've, uh, which was which was great. Where actually people treated us as if we might be real artists, which was great. Fun. We were mistaken for being famous. Yeah. Just, oh, that, I couldn't get over that. Yeah. And so people came up and asked for our signatures. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know who we are? No, but I want your signature. Yeah. <laughs> I think the fact that we're, we're biddable and we'll happily draw. For people who, who say, "Can you draw something for us?" and we'll do it, uh, that made us very popular. These things, because that, that's the, the whole point of it, really. <laughs> but uh, that was good fun. It was good fun. That was great, yeah. Then we had the science fiction exhibition. Yes, yeah, which, which we set which, up our house to begin with, yeah, yeah. Which, which started off in the Yellow Door Gallery in Dumfries, yeah. which was a huge hoop, wasn't it? I mean, it. Um, we had uh, we had red cocktails and blue cocktails, didn't we? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and which one was the alcoholic one? Was it the blue one? I can't remember. I don't think people were sure, so that, that, that was one of the problems. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, that went very well. In fact, we, we kind of splashed out of it because we, we moved to other things. I think I'm a wee example of one of the things you did. It wasn't just the illustrations we were showing in that one. Uh, we had things like this as well that you, you were sculpting. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's one of my sculptures. Yeah. yeah. I showed that to Emily, and I think it scared her a bit. Yeah, let's take it away. Yeah, we have had, we have been having inquiries about that one, Steve. So we'll let you know if we find a buyer for you. <laughs> we'll wait and see. Yeah, yeah, he's um, he's put, he's, uh, he's ready to go. Yeah, buy the ticket, take the ride. Yeah, great. Yeah. So so we've you know, we've kind of branched out to you know showing the illustrations and the covers and some other stuff we do, and uh, comic frames that kind of thing, but also sculptures and things that make noises and annoy people and really good. Then, then we went off to the Scottish Parliament. That yes. was good. Yes, yeah, we happened to have invited a local MSP to the opening night of the exhibition, and uh, she decided that she should invite us to the Scottish Parliament. So that was great fun. We, we sat in the garden. The bit you see when the on the TV when the the reporters talking about the you know, what's going on in Parliament, we were actually down there with all our artwork and chatting to movers and shakers of Scotland and uh, trying to persuade them that they want to do science fiction and it would be helpful if they bought a magazine or two. And I'm not sure we sold very many of it at the time. It's, it's, it's a great thing to do. It's a great one having your CV though. Yep, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, uh, and of course we have now been security checked for, for in there and all that sort of thing and, and they didn't discover you weren't from Earth. That's right, yeah, they didn't, <laughs> they didn't check my NAR6 passport. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they actually led to a lot of things for Stroll and Infinity Group. Uh, no, this point we, did a, we got involved with the Scotland's Futures Forum and there's all sorts of other things that uh, we got published because we got involved with that. So, so it's it, to get from now six orbit back to Earth, that's three months. So yeah. uh, when you get back, what, are, what, what will you be working on? What are you drawing them all? Ah, right. Well, I, I've just got a new webcomic on the go. Um, is, uh, I thought I'd, I'd respond to lockdown in, in the only way I know how, which is draw a comic. Um, so I've got a, I've always wanted to try and get something, a kind of long running, continuous comic with lots of different characters in it that we could just do little short stories with. So I've now invented a, a space comic called Magpie, Magpie of Space, uh, which is on, on my, my Magpie of Space blog, which I'll try and give you a link to at some point. Um, and uh, that one, in fact, it is, it is a link because Bill's got the one by Blood, which gives you that. Um, but see, uh, that one, the idea was there's a lot of regular characters. It's, it's kind of got, you know, the sort of thing, familiar thing. There's a spaceship, there's a crew, um, but they don't have weapons and uh, phasers and stuff like that. They're, they're actually proper astronauts because they're all scientists exploring the galaxy. But see, uh, they're trying to do this uh, while being completely ignored by most official folk and, and under resourced. And uh, they arrive at a space station in the first, ep first episode, 
and uh, the star pox has hit and everything has to get locked down and uh, the whole first adventure is them um, trying to find a way of getting away from the space station and proving that they're, they're not infected and getting on to the, the next science conference and uh, that's been running for 10 episodes now so pretty good and I'll just put the address up on the chat thing so that's handy it's uh, magpiespace.blogspot.com I've forgotten that <laughs> it's, it's very straightforward uh, if you can't find it, you can go to spacepilot.scot and you can get it from there. But uh, yeah, web comics, I've done a few of those over the years and never finished one, so I'm hoping that this one will actually uh, be a bit easier to do and I might actually finish the story. Well, you, th you seem to have finished a lot more than I've finished. I'm still working on that uh, the, the, the twin story, which probably will go on forever and ever and ever. But um, That's a real epic, that one. <laughs> yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> it's going to cost a fortune to publish it if I ever get that far. As I see, it gets the way twin finished. It's going to be a big, hefty tome, quite a large format as well. You know, it's just yeah, at least, well, yeah, yeah. So Probably at least A4, I would have thought. Um, it's an art book yeah, that will break your coffee table. I, I, I like the idea of um, it, not a graphic novel, but yep. um, uh, like. A, a, Children's books used to be a story, and then on the opposite side of the page, of the story, uh, the opposite page would be the illustration. And I thought, why well, can't you know, we can have this for grown-ups? What's the wrong? Why why do grown-up stories not have full-page illustrations in colour all the way through them? Yeah. And I thought, yeah, that's what I want to do. So it's an illustrated grown-ups novel, science fiction novel. Yeah. I look forward to seeing that. Get there eventually. They actually, one of the illustrations for it that was borrowed for um, Shoreline cover, wasn't it? I think I have that one. That's just a really, yeah, I think I've got that one. The, the Further Mohawk, that's the one. Oh, yeah. It's uh, in there, further down. And the colour ones then. It is. It is. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. So that's that's been borrowed from the, the twin yeah. story that I'm writing. Yeah, because there's actually a, a steam train involved here, is that right? It's, yep, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, that's where, this is where I live. This is now six, is where I live, in my uh, in my head. It's like a dystopian world yep. with um, big climatic issue, climate issues, um, hence the dry zone. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, so that's that's what I'm working on, but it's a very long, ongoing story. Yeah, oh, well, that's uh, something to look forward to. It's not quite... yep. <laughs> uh, right, so uh, well, the other, other things we've done, yeah, that we talked to me about being at the, the uh, comic festival and sitting drawing for people. Uh, one of the things we did try to get going was that when we did these things actually live, uh, you and I would sit around the tables drawing and uh, you know, see people would notice and maybe come and see what we're up to. <laughs> so, well, what was that experience like for you? Did you, did you get... that, was, that was quite amazing because we the first one we did was uh, at the um, Deadhead Comics, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, we back at the beginning. That's right. Yeah. At the beginning, uh, Deadhead Comics, um, and I was I was uh, flabbergasted because the, the, the remember that you probably well I think you were in on the conversation. We were sitting just drawing, and and these youngsters came in. I don't know they were in their twenties, and uh, they were looking over my shoulder and and, and over your shoulder, and they kept going, "Wow, wow, look at that." And I engaged them in conversation. It turns out that they were art students in Edinburgh. Yeah. Why you keep saying wow? <laughs> <laughs> how have you done this? How, how have you got this effect? And how, you know what what are you using here? I said well, it's a pen. You know, it's paper. It's watercolors. Do you, you know, you're doing an art degree. Do you not use these things? Oh no, it's all done on a computer. Yeah. That's, that's, that's so sad. <laughs> that is so so sad. Yeah. You know, um, you know, you're missing out such a huge raft of things there. Yeah. I mean, I use the computer a bit, but I mean, you should be able to use both. Yeah, that's know, probably school and, 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 and not before you go to publication, but it's great to just use a pencil paper to create really cool artwork and, and get you know, feel the materials and you know, yeah. Like I mean, the, the, the background's kind of partly digital, uh, but like the I love the turn of sky. That's that, hand painted, that, yeah. That, that, Turner esque. Yeah. Turner -esque. yeah. Are, are there actual oil paints involved with that, or is it watercolour? Watercolour, yeah. Watercolour, yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah, that's really worked. 
But yeah, that was that was a great experience. I mean, I I, I used to be a street artist, so I, at one stage, and so I, I got over that fear of people looking over my shoulder a long, long time ago. Mm -hmm. Some people yes. don't like being watched while they draw. Yeah, yeah, that's anything but more involved with that group recently. I was surprised at how many of them joined me. If I said, let's all go down to you know the White Sands by the, the river, then we'll draw and see what people, you know, who comes up to his dot spot, and then they'll say, oh, no, I couldn't, I couldn't draw people watching. Oh, right, okay. So that just fell flat. I couldn't get him to come with me. <laughs> so that was that. But my, my only problem with being a, a street artist, the one thing I really used to hate, I used to be sitting there and you'd have you got your little stool and you'd be sitting and drawing and painting and then some dog would come and cock its leg on you. Thought, oh. <laughs> yeah, you don't move very much, you do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, not, I'm not a lamppost, mate, you know. Uh, and then the owner of the dog would just look at you as if, like, it's your fault, you think. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, public drawing, good fun. Yeah, yep. uh, it, it's good. It, it hardens you, you know, it's, uh, it, um, and it means you can draw anywhere if you get used to it. Sure. You've done this, haven't you, Emily? Public drawing? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she's... Oh, yeah. We're, we're going to have some questions towards... In fact, I'm just wondering if we're maybe heading up towards question time, actually, because that's got about 15 minutes to go. Um, do you want to go to questions, Steve, see what people want to ask yeah, us? Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think there's some starting to come up down the side here. Um, no idea how it works. Yeah, yeah. I, I, might just... to, I might have to run off camera and get another martini. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> they, re they refill automatically, those things. <laughs> yeah, well, I can. Uh, there's a couple of questions that come up, or well, one has anyway. Um, yeah, oh, from a Simon Toner. Oh, yeah. I want to ask this as well. Tell us more about twins, Steve. What, what's it about? Give us a quick rundown of the story. Oh, right. it's um, it's 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 a road movie in in, in a story. So it's it, it's literally the, the story of two characters and a, and a journey. Um, All right. They're, they're twins. So the whole the, the theme is it's a twin. So you've got a twin Earth. Um, which is not uh, now not uh, not what is it when it's not zygotic uh, diozygotic? It's not identical twin Earth. It's similar. Is that right? I think that's right. Yeah, I'll take your word for it. Yeah. Yeah, you take my word for it. Anyway, it's two brothers, not twins, but they are brothers, and they uh, set out on a journey. And you've got it's the yin and the yang. There's a good brother. There's a bad brother. One of them is the keeper of the other. And basically, it's a journey they make across the planet, and a journey of discovery, and that's it. That's yeah. all. It. So, what kind of attracts you to this idea of uh, graphic on one side, and words on the other side? That's you're right. I don't see that at all in adult books. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, there's nothing that says you can't have, uh, you know, a, 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 you can have a, 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 a graphic novel, which that that's just a comic strip again. For grown-ups, but why not have illustrations which help people who maybe like a story but are not big, big science fiction fans, so don't have the kind of imagination to conjure up different worlds. So if you help them with an illustration, particularly if each illustration is um, like a fine art painting, so you could, I, I like the idea of you could take any picture or any frame and blow it up and put it in a, in, in a real frame and hang it on the wall and you could live with it. Yeah. Um, so that, that's, that's, that's the kind of remit and it's just growing bit by bit. Yeah. That's why I think you should put big format, um, comfortable art book. As, as big as I can afford to publish, basically. A big, a big A3 one at the very least. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's really good. So I look forward to seeing that. So is it going to be full colour or is it black and white? Yeah. Well, if I can afford it, full colour. Um, I mean, it's not going to be a massive thick tone. Um, yeah. It's not a huge monster long story. It's not uh, Lord of the Rings or anything like that, or Dune. It's it's a slim one. Um, well, hopefully the you know the illustrations will carry it. That's what I like to think. Okay. Well, I look forward to that, yeah. Oh, there's a question from Emily. Uh, Emily, do you want to ask it? Do you want to bring this up online or shall I ask it for you? Okay. <laughs> the cat's taking up your time. Fair enough. 
Yeah, Emily asks, this is to Mark and Steve, do you have a favourite science fiction story or author? You first, Mark. Oh my gosh. Um, no, I have quite a lot of favourite authors. Um, one of the ones actually that Steve's illustration reminded me of was um, Harry Harrison, a favourite of mine for quite a long time. I encountered him when I was at school. And uh, he's one of the first science fiction authors that actually saw a live event trying to explain what it was he did. And he turned out to be just as funny in real life as he was in his stories. And the, 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 the stainless steel rat stories are some of my favourite ones of his, where he's, where he's a slippery yeah. green, uh, who's a kind of a intergalactic con man spy dodgy character, and the kind of the opposite of your usual science fiction hero caught in a big galactic empire sort of thing. And he just kind of takes apart all the, the kind of assumed, you know, lofty ideas of science fiction, and rips into shreds and does the yeah. render and comes up with something completely new. Uh, so I was liked his way of doing that sort of thing. And in fact, later on, it turned out that 2018 turned his Stanley Steel Rat stuff into comics as well. So it, it, it translated directly to that. So it's yeah, good. that's a very visual set of stories of the Stanley Steel Rat. I tried reading those as well. Yeah. Uh, Lots of, so lots of weird gadgets and strange people yeah. that are really well described and, and they just pose the, the, the writer was yeah. brilliant. Harry Harrison was of course famous for writing Make Room, Make Room, which became a film. Anyone know the name of the film? No. Nope. Solid Green. <laughs> what? The Solid Green? Yeah. Oh, Solid Green, is that right? No, oh, yes, yeah. Solid Green is people. <laughs> Oh, do give the punchline away, Mark. That's it. Don't bother with it. Spoiler, isn't it? Throw the book away. <laughs> hey, what about you? What's one of your favourite uh, writers, science fiction writers, or stories? Oh, um, I'll be honest. I don't read a lot of fiction at all. I never have. But I am a massive fan of Ray Bradbury, and and the Martian uh, stories are just fantastic. I just you can't beat them, and I like. His short stories, particularly, I, I liked them when I was a teenager, and I still like them. And stuff like yeah. Rocket Summer, or um, what was the one with the uh, was it si uh, Silence, uh, Sound of Thunder? A Sound of Thunder was just yeah. incredible. Where these guys jump through time and they go big safari hunting, and they get this chance yeah. to actually go and shoot Tyrannosaurus Rex. Yeah. It's, yeah, just, one, yeah. it's just a wee short story, that 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 one, uh, yeah. But any any other kind of Ray Bradbury things are just fantastic. The guy got a wicked imagination. Yeah, I could see why he'd appreciate Ray Bradbury because his writing style was very, very well textured, wasn't it? There's was lots of detail, but yeah. there also broad sweeps with uh, phrases which I almost you can see the words leaping into a picture in your mind. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I did a Ray Bradbury project. For Gallery at one time, with about four or five of them, just off my own back, just have some die. And yeah. just because the stories are, they're very, very much like that. The, 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 the Martian ones, where the, where the you know, the, the humans that are, are populating Mars, yeah. and there's constant references to that there may or may not still be some Martians about, you know, yeah. and the buildings are there, and the artifacts are there, you know, and the, the library, the metal paper books are just fallen to pieces and and the you know and, and the canals and it's all there but there's it's just sort of le left you know it's not populated anymore it's kind of silent and eerie and it just comes across so well in the story absolutely is it echoes of that with your background there to you if i may say yeah. yeah yeah i mean you can see you can see the influence in everything i do really it's still now that and mobius mobius is illustrations just there's nobody's yeah. good at them. Well, Ray is a good choice. In fact, following off on that theme, Simon, do you want to ask this question you put in the chat? Do you want to ask the question? Do you want to come online? Sure. Okay. Um, so I asked a very silly question. I wasn't sure whether you would uh, go for it, but uh, uh, I asked, uh, have you ever made art for animals, maybe cats, on Narsix? And what would you do if you did make a book for cats? <laughs> Art for cats. Oh God, that's an interesting one. Um, I, what would I do? Um, anything that move, anything small that moved. Scuttling art. That'd be quite interesting, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. But we're, we're, we've got a cat here on Nar Six, a huge black one. We imported it. It was exorbitant cost from Earth, 
that it didn't take well to um, three months in suspended animation, unfortunately, and all his teeth fell out. Um, but he's still a, a great big affectionate animal, um, and uh, eats a lot of food, and uh, sometimes baths. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, art, I don't know about art for animals. Do, they th do you think they appreciate it? I thought art was a human thing. Well, we have we have a cat in the audience at the moment, so I, I, I just thought that there's an extra bit of, uh, of audience for, for it. Seems to be interested in what's going on at the moment. It seems to be. Yeah. Uh, I keep getting distracted by this kitten. Yeah. <laughs> Cats seem to play a large role in video, video conferencing at the moment, don't they? Oh, they're monitoring us very carefully through VC as cats. So watch out for that. Yeah, yeah they're actually coming through from another dimension. We only really just see the cat, but it's actually a much more complex being. Yeah. Well, I've got a question for you, Mark. It's uh, it's quite fun asking you a question. <laughs> As art director of a of a science fiction magazine, you've got quite a challenge there with getting illustrations for every issue. How do you how do you embrace that challenge, and what's the the way what techniques do you use to cope with that challenge, and and teasing artists to produce the artwork for you? I think I just got very lucky that we had a lot of artists came on. We didn't really, only had, I think we had six or eight just to start with. So nobody was going to be overworked or you know, given too much to do. And uh, we also were very lucky. We have a lot of artists joined us at the start. You know, we can no longer afford, um, but they were willing to give it a start with us. <laughs> <laughs> well, soon. You'll not be able to call me soon, I reckon. Steve and, and Dave Alexander. <laughs> the rest moved on <laughs> because they were all a lot younger and just starting out. But some fantastic artists that we had to draw on. Uh, you know, people like Sarah Julia, uh, yeah. going on to big things. And uh, so uh, it was good just having all those people that I knew could really draw and the sort of things they could draw. Um, made it very really easy because there was a whole range of talents there. So basically, I just look at the stories, and um, usually, just a few pages into it, I'll, I'll, I'll get an impression of, of a particular artist's look will jump out at me for it. And um, then I, I just get onto them and say, Here's a story that's for you. And, and most of the time, I'm right. Occasionally, I'm not, and they go, Oh, I don't know about that. And I, I have to get somebody else. But uh, although occasionally, I've had one where somebody wasn't sure. And then I've kind of found, I'm sure Dave won't mind if I, there was one about a time traveling pigeon. And uh, <laughs> the, the pigeons that got time travel and decided to annihilate the human race for what they did to the passenger pigeon in this story. And he thought, I don't know how I'm going to illustrate this because there was just so many events in it. And I just said, uh, HG Wells time machine, but with a pigeon. And he thought, oh, that's it. And with this wonderful picture he came up with of the, um, the movie version of the time machine, you know, with the, the big disc at the back and this pigeon sitting on it and it just got the story exactly um yeah. so, so that kind of helped with that but i, th I think what helps is when I, I don't remember stories in terms of words because when i read them they just go straight to pictures in my head so i cannot i've always got an idea for how you would illustrate one apart from the ones that really annoy me that where the, the writer doesn't have any you know sensitivity at all for setting and really <laughs> they make me really angry when they read them but that, that's another thing <laughs> That's one of the reasons why I didn't. I don't do much of the reading, <laughs> but um, but the, you know, most stories will just throw up some pictures, and so when I, I've got an idea of somebody, I'll, I'll get to them. And if they're not sure, I can I can throw some of these pictures at them and say, "Have a look at this." Yeah. And Dave gets them. It, it's it's very difficult. I mean, I remember the the, the Apple Bay story, and I, I I sat down. You sent me that one and said, "I think you could maybe find something in this day." I read that three times. Yeah. And I thought, all it is is somebody walking on the beach thinking to themselves, <laughs> and how the hell do you illustrate that? Yeah. <laughs> and then just focus on to one tiny technical bit with the mechanical bee, yeah. or a load of mechanical bees. And I thought, that's the only technical bit in that I can find. Yes. <laughs> something you could possibly illustrate. Yeah. That's a good illustration. You that. That was it, was it was definitely one of the hardest. Yeah. Yeah, that one's in the gallery. I'll let people find that one themselves. Yeah. Uh, actually, I can probably bring that one up. It's a fantastic image. I'll bring that up. Give me a second or two to 
We've used that. We've used this little blown up in some of the exhibitions. Stands a lot of examinations, lots of detail. In it. Yeah, I'll bring it up because it's certainly well worth looking at that one. Because that's that, that was one. Remember, we went back for that with a few times, and, and I was saying, yeah, it's about an apple bee. It's an apple bee, <laughs> and eventually, apple bee. Yeah, I'll draw the apple bee. <laughs> that was what came out of it. <laughs> so. Yeah. Let me just... There we go. I'm just going to share the screen. It's big, it's big but it doesn't give me the story. Is about a guy walking along the beach, and there's a lot of stuff, quite deep stuff. Comes oh, out. This picture. Can you it's see that? Yeah, he, he was just this, this guy just having deep thoughts walking along the beach, yeah. and I thought, I can't draw this. You know, I mean, he could. I could have just done a picture, got a picture of a guy on a beach, but that would have been a bit dull. Yeah. Um, but this is really intriguing when you see this, and it is the science fiction centre of the thing. Um, but, uh, if you if you really carefully, there's a reference number stamped. There's a really Red, registration number on the B. Yeah, yeah, which is kind of that's very Blade Runner, isn't it? Yeah, it is. That, that's right. Very Blade Runner. Yeah. Um, uh, but, that's what I love about your star, Steve. And it reminds me very much of Rupert the Bear comics, <laughs> the, the Express, was it? Oh. I think it's still going. Yeah. Rupert the Bear. Yeah, All that texture and detail. That's right. That's a, it's a strange middle name that he has. Yes, same as Attila the Hun's middle name, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And Winnie the Pooh, strangely, yeah, they should all have the same <laughs> middle name. They were related. Very strange. Yeah. But I wonder who the original there was that they all named after. Yeah, but if you go, I mean, that's really is the, the the limit of the resolution. That's the, how much you work you put into those little. Lines is amazing. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 you put it's a lot of work you put in the detail, but it, what it gives you is not just the detail; it gives you texture. Yeah, yeah. And unless yeah. you put it in, the the, the 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 illustrations are quite dull. Yeah, and yeah. you've got to have texture. Um, I think anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah no, that's what I mean. That all you would see is very splodges and and kind of weird <laughs> lines and stuff. But again, that, that's just my way of getting texture. It's a slightly different approach to it, but yeah. it's, you can just zoom in and zoom in. There's lots of detail. Oh, one last question then. So we've got time for that. Simon, do you want to speak out? Sure. I thought I'd ask a more serious question. Um, uh, what advice would you have for new artists who would like to get involved? And the second part being, uh, has being part of a community of artists helped you in your work? You, Mark. Yeah, well, the first one, uh, people who want to get involved, uh, I need to see an online portfolio that gets my attention. So that, that's usually what we ask for. And uh, it works differently for people who write for the magazine because uh, that we basically take unsolicited um, stories and we just pick out the best ones. Whereas with artists, we want people who we can then assign stuff to. So we need to know it's somebody who's got an identified ability and style that we can rely on. So I need to see a portfolio and then we basically get them to join the group. So there's a bit of a commitment to it with, with that. So it's more than just a one-off. You know, so, uh, so and again, that then makes them part of this community of artists. Um, so I don't know, what, what, do you, what about the community thing, Steve? What, what, what would you say about that? Uh, just just stepping back slightly, when you say portfolio, what? how many illustrations, what format, you know, if, if somebody wanted to kind of get involved and show you how good or how, yeah. you know, what they have to offer, basically. Well, be, a basic, they have to be able to produce a good, uh, you know, printable in book illustration. Generally, if there's good, good drawing skills there, that's what I'm looking for. So we want to show those off. That works best in the magazine. Uh, although now we're doing a lot more stuff in colour because the digital version can cope with that. Um, but see, I like to see people who can do a contrasty picture, which will work nicely in the, the black and white printed version, but also be able to tell stories with it. So we're we'll looking at, uh, you know, not just a, like a perfect reproduction of something I've seen in a comic or a book somewhere, but something with a character that I've not seen before and that kind of thing. And that, that jumps in. I think, yeah, that, that's somebody who can probably tell a story. So we'll, we'll go for that. Yeah. Sorry, there was, a, there was another question. Um, over there, you asked me, right? Yeah, community. Yeah, being uh, has that helped your work? Being part of a community of artists. I just uh, oh, I, I, no. Uh, well, I, I, a bit. I mean, you know, there's there's some work uh, for Shoreline, and then there's this 
cover art. There's not a great deal of people. People don't want old folk like me to do illustration for stuff, you know. Oh they, yes, they, they do. They, they, they don't really want to pay for it. You know, no, I'm not talking a shoreline now. I'm talking of like the big bad outside world. That's what I find these days is that anybody's publishing anything, and they need an illustration. They they just choose a photograph, or they get a stock image, or they just download it because it's cheap. You know, they don't want to pay uh, sensible rates for artists to create something from scratch. I mean, Shoreline doesn't pay the going rate, but I don't mind because I like Shoreline. Um, you know, I'll, I'd do it on the QT, I'd do it for nothing. But, uh, hang on, uh, hang on, switch a little bit. Right. <laughs> That's me. That's me gone. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, maybe we should explain that the, the show invention group is, is a co-op. So um, if, if this project's not successful, quite often we do end up working for nothing. But uh, if if there's you know some chance of the, the, the thing you've illustrated being part of something that will make money, yes, there's, there's money about for that, and it, it's a self. I, I just I just do it for the fame, the fame you see. Yes, this, this sort of stuff. You know, the whole world watching me. Funny if you was reading the comics, I did the next one. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. Now we do have spin-off projects which we do get funding for, so we do actually try and give the members of the community, the group, first dibs at those projects. And uh, and then the other that you're talking about, Steve, that's that's one of those offspins. So the, there should be something coming your way at some point. I promise. It's all right. A few, a few pennies. A few pennies. We, we live very frugally here on North 6, so I'd just go out and shoot a few caribou and we'll just keep eating. <laughs> caribou on stick for tea, excellent. There you go. That's the one. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I think it's probably time to, to wind up or wind down. I'm quite sure which phrase to use. Um, so, thank you, Steve, and thank you, right. Mark, It's a your... good time to go because the, the martini glass is empty. Okay. Yeah, my... <laughs> My, my tea's getting cold as well, so yeah. So. <laughs> so, thanks to you two. Um, so, round of applause. There's the way to do the round of applause online, by the way, is you wave your hands like that and say, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, let's all wave our hands and clap as well, yes. Yeah. So where's where's the gallery? We've got the, we've got the hand claps. We've got the way to hand claps. Thanks for your coming, folks. That's great. <laughs> okay. So, thank you very much. and. Look out for more events on Sean and Infinity. We've got one coming up on Thursday, so make sure you come along to that if you can. And uh, I'll just send you that quick plug for that while I'm here. That's this one here. I'm just going to zoom that in. Do -do -do -dum. And it's Naila King and Chimadam Hoebu who will be talking about surveillance, surveillance in the future. So that's on Thursday evening, so come along to that. That'll be brilliant. And Shoreline Infinity is available at www.shorelineofinfinity.com. So come along and find out what we do. So thanks again, Steve. Thanks again. Pleasure. Anytime. That's brilliant. Okay. Safe journey home, people. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Seth. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>